الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله The abuse of Madani channel The beloved Nabi of Allah عز وجل صلى الله عليه وسلم has beautifully stated that there will be no shade on the day of judgment except for the throne of Allah Azza wa Jal. Three persons will remain beneath the shade of the divine throne of Allah Azza wa Jal. It was humbly asked, Ya Rasul Allah, who will be these people, these three people that you mentioned? The Rasul of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam replied that firstly, it will be the one who released the stress and the distress of my ummati, of my follower. Number second, the one who revives my sunnah. And number third, will be the one who recites durood and salam upon me abundantly. Subhanallah, these are the Mubarak words of our beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So let us prove our love for him and for the sake the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal, Sallu ala al-Habib, Sallallahu ala Muhammad, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah Azza wa Jal states in the Holy Quran regarding the virtues of worshipping and he states, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنْشَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ That I have created jinns and humans only so that they worship me. This is the sole purpose of the creation of mankind, Allahu Akbar, in the words of our Rabb Azza wa Jal. And he states in another occasion in the Holy Quran, Whenever it is about to extinguish, we will inflame it more for them. This ayah is ayah number 97 of Surah Bani Israel. The viewers of Madani channel tremble with divine fear and make true repentance. Just ponder when the person who does not offer salah will be put into the dangerous valley. So what will become of him? Therefore, safety lies in it that we should develop a strong desire for nafal acts of worship besides offering our regular fard duties and acts. We should offer all five salahs with jama'ah, offer the nawafil and tahajjud, ishraq, chash, awabin, observe fast of the month of Ramadan every year and should also observe nafl siyam during the year. In case of being the owner of nisab, meaning liable to pay zakat, we should make our habit to spend in other righteous acts besides paying zakat. We should form a habit to recite the Holy Quran, do the zikr of Allah Azza wa Jal and recite Salat ala Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on a daily basis. Further, we should be away of our enemy, the cursed Satan, because when he sees us day and night busy with these acts of worship, he will try his best to divert our attention away from the path of Allah Azza wa Jal. He will make us feel lazy and use different tricks to make us heedless, but remaining steadfast will have to make dua for steadfastness in worship until we are alive instead of feeling proud of our acts of worship our allah azza wa jal has commanded us to worship until the end of our life and he has stated in the holy quran
and keep worshipping your Lord till death. Regarding the above mentioned ayah, it is stated in Tafsir Siratul Jinan, no matter how great pious saint a person becomes, he cannot be free from acts of worship. When the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was commanded to worship until his uh, blessed apparent demise, so who we are from this, such people should get advice who consider themselves to be of very high status and rank and become lazy in the acts of worship, they should ponder lest they fall prey to Satan's secret and dangerous attacks because by such attacks Satan has led great mashayikh astray and with the same attack he tried to deceive Sheikh Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Jilani rahimahullah ta'ala, the chief of pious saints. Sayyidina Sheikh Abu Nasr Musa bin Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani has said, My father said during a journey I went towards the desert and stayed there for a few days, but I could not get water. When I felt thirsty, a cloud gave me a shade and a thing resembling rain fell from it on me, by which my thirst was satisfied. I then saw a nur that illuminated the corner of the sky and a face appeared from which I heard a voice, O oh Abdul Qadir, I am your Rabb and I have made haram things halal for you. So I recited, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem and said, O oh cursed Satan, get lost. So the illuminated corner turned into darkness and the face turned into smoke. It then told me, O oh Abdul Qadir, you have achieved salvation through your knowledge and the commandment of your Lord. And in the similar way, I led 70 mashayikh astray. I said, it is only the grace and favor of my Lord. Sayyidina Shaykh Abu Nasr Musa rahimahullah further said that he was asked, how did you know it was Satan? He replied, I knew from the thing that he said, undoubtedly, I have made haram things halal for you. These were the words that made Sayyidina Osipak suspicious of him and he recognized immediately that it was indeed a Satan. It is mentioned in, in the biography of Sayyidina Osipak by the name of Bahjatul Asrar. The Islamic brothers, have you noticed how Satan tries to lead righteous bondmen of Allah Azza wa Jalla astray. But what will become of us? Firstly, we do not worship. Secondly, if we perform virtuous deed, we become very happy and do not feel relaxed until we mention it to many people to make a good name for ourselves. Further, considering ourselves to be better than others, we think that we are pious and abstinent. Remember, Satan worshipped thousands of years and had been the teacher of angels. But due to arrogance and disobedience to divine command, his years of acts of worship became useless and spiritual exercises of thousands of years were ruined. He has been predestined to disgrace and curse forever and has become deserving of the torment of fire forever and lost his faith. Alas, we do not know as to how many times we disobey our Lord during the day. We continue to commit sins throughout the day. We do not perform fard or obligatory acts of worship, let alone performing nafal acts of worship. However, the purpose of our birth is to worship Allah Azza wa Jal as it is mentioned in the 56th verse of Surah Az-Zariyat, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has stated, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنْسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ And I created the jinns and men only for them to worship me. Subhanallah. 
These are the words of Allah Almighty. This is the sole purpose of our creation. Similarly, in the second ayah of Surah Al-Mulk, Allah Azza wa Jal has stated the purpose of our creation. الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا وهو العزيز الغفور. The one who created death and life to test you, who among you has the better deeds, and he only is the most honourable, the oft forgiving. Dear viewers of Madani channel, in the both above mentioned blessed verses of the Holy Quran, the real purpose of the creation of human being has been mentioned. For achieving this purpose, man has been sent to this world for a very brief period of time. Therefore, attaching importance to this, get busy preparing for the grave and the day of judgment. Instead of wasting any moment of our life in useless activities, try to spend it in worship and spiritual exercises, recitation of the Holy Quran, abundance of zikr and salat ala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and presenting call towards righteousness because we do not know whether we shall be alive the next moment or death will make us asleep forever. Let us listen to a beautiful hadith of our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam where he has stated اغتنم خمسا قبل خمس meaning value five things before five things. And number one he mentioned شبابك قبل haramik meaning that value your youth before old age. And number two he mentioned وَصِحَّتَكَ قَبَلَ سَقَمِكْ and value your health before illness. And number third, he mentioned وَغِنَاكَ قَبْلَ فَقْرِكْ and value your wealth before poverty. And number four, he sallallahu alayhi wa said and value your free time before you become busy. And number five, Rasulullah sallallahu mentioned وَحَيَاتَكَ قَبْلَ mautik and value your life before death. These are the Mubarak words of Rasulullah sallallahu wasallam mentioned in Mustadrak ala sahihain And dear viewers of Madani channel, keeping the real aim of our life in mind and attaching importance to our healthy bodies and youth before any illnesses, disability or old age, we should perform as many virtuous deeds as possible. Our beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would remain busy worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal the whole night and due to standing for a long time, his blessed feet used to swell. And Sayyida Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha, she narrated that the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would stand so much during Salah that his blessed feet would swell. One day, Sayyidah Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha humbly said, Ya Rasulullah, you are doing like this, though Allah Azza wa Jal has forgiven the sins of the people of the past and the future because of your blessed self, Ya Rasulullah. The beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam replied, O Aisha, should I not become thankful servant of Allah Azza wa Jal? These were the words of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that although he spent so much of time, he dedicated his entire life in the worship of Allah Azza wa Jal, but still he continued to worship Allah Azza wa Jal. Every chance he got, he would sacrifice his sleep and stand in worship so much so that his Mubarak feet used to swell up. Allahu Akbar, this hadith is mentioned in Sahih Muslim. Dear Islamic brothers, have you heard the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would perform his worship and spiritual exercises to such an extent that his blessed feet would swell? Even then he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam remained busy with worship. On the other hand, we remain busy 
throughout the day in worldly chores and remain heedless of offering salahs which are to be offered during the day. Furthermore, making excuses of being tired, we sleep heedless without offering Isha Salah at night. We set our alarms at night if we have to go somewhere for the purpose of business or job so that we do not get late. But regretfully, we don't make such an effort for offering Fajr Salah with congregation. Why don't we? Remember, we are Muslims and for Muslims, five Salah throughout the day are obligatory. The one who misses Salah will become a sinner and deserving of the torment of hell. We have to offer all five Salahs whether we are traveling or at home. Facing cold or hot weather, having joyful or sad occasions in addition to performing obligatory Salahs, acting upon the beautiful Sunnah of our beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we should try to perform some acts of worship regularly after sacrificing our sleep during the night so that we can also be included amongst the righteous bondmen of Allah Azza wa Jal because performing worship during the night is a very beautiful attribute of the righteous bondmen of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal has stated this attribute in Verse number 64 of Surah Al-Furqan and he has stated وَالَّذِينَ يَبِيثُونَ لِرَبِّهِمْ سُجَّدًا وَقِيَامًا And who spend the night prostrating and standing for their Lord. Allahu Akbar. These are the words of our Lord Almighty and he states these words meaning that spending night in making sajda and standing for our Rabb Azza wa Jal, Allahu Akbar, this is the purpose of our life. This is the sole purpose that we have been created for to pray and to worship our Allah Azza wa Jal as much as we possibly and humanly can. And inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the tawfiq and ability to be such obedient servants of Allah Azza wa Jal. So we reap the blessings of our virtuous actions in this dunya as well as in the hereafter. There were such pious predecessors in the Ummah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who worshipped day and night and still did not want to be known so when we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is not to publicize, but it is between us and our Rabb Azza wa Jal. May Allah Azza wa Jal give us tawfiq to be sincere in His court and to have ikhlas in our ibadah. And through our ikhlas, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our worship in His court. Sayyidina Shaykh Shibli rahimahullah ta'ala has said, in the beginning of my spiritual exercises, when I would feel sleepy, I would apply salt with the needle in my eyes. When I would feel much sleepy, I would move a hot needle in my eyes. Allahu Akbar. Sayyidina Ibrahim bin Hakim rahimahullah ta'ala said, when my respected father would feel sleepy, he would go into the river and start doing tasbih of Allah Azza wa Jal by hearing which the fish of the river would gather and they would also start reciting the tasbih of Allah Azza wa Jal. SubhanAllah, these were the pious predecessors and how they worshipped Allah Azza wa Jal. This should be a lesson for us when Sayyidina Wahab bin Munabbih rahimahullah ta'ala made dua to get rid of his sleep. Allah Azza wa Jal answered his dua and he did not feel sleepy for 40 years. Allahu Akbar. This is mentioned in Mukashifatul Qulub. Let us listen to a few parables of worship acts and spiritual exercises carried out by the pious saints during the night and create a strong desire for worship. Sayyidina Habib Najjar, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, worship 
the whole night and would observe saum fasting throughout the day he would give food he was presented for iftar to others and would worship himself hungrily for the whole night and he would be in the blessed court of allah azza wa jal allah akbar when the morning was about to come he would humbly say in the court of allah azza wa jal i remained heedless and continued to commit sins wallah azza wa jal disgraceful sinful and ill bondman of yours is present at your door of mercy and beseech your protection it is mentioned in awwadul faiq the sister of imam muhammad bin sirin rahimahullah ta'ala sayyida hafsa bint sirin she was a woman in basra and she would perform worship excessively she would spend the whole night offering salah and recite half of the holy quran during the salah sometimes she would stand for such a long time at the place where she would offer salah that her oil lamp would get extinguished but the home would remain illuminated for her until the morning without the oil lamp allahu akbar this is mentioned in tafsir siratul jinan allahu akbar what a beautiful story that although the lamp used to run out of oil but it was the qudrat of allah through the qudrat of allah azza wa jal and through the barakah and the blessing of her ibadat that her room would still be lit until the morning sayyida rabi abasari had a habit till her death that she would offer salah the whole night when the time of fajr will get near she would sleep for a while she then would wake up and say oh nafs how long will you sleep and how long will you be awake very soon you will experience such a sleep after which you will wake up only in the morning of the day of judgment mashallah this is mentioned in tafsir ruhul bayan and the shayar very beautifully says jagna hai jag le aflaq ke saaye tale hashr tak sota rahega khaak ke saaye tale sayyidna qabisa bin uqba rahimahullah taala he says that i saw sayyidna sufyan athawri rahimahullah taala in dream after his death and i asked him ma fa'ala allah bik meaning how did allah azza wa jal treat you he replied i saw my merciful lord so allah azza wa jal said to me o oh, ibn sa'id congratulations i am pleased with you because when night would fall you would worship me with tears and undivided attention paradise is in front of you whatever place you want you may take and you keep seeing me because i am not far from you allahu akbar this is mentioned in hilyatul awliya sallu ala al habib sallallahu ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this is the barakat and the faizan of worshiping allah azza wa jal throughout the day and night with undivided attention and this is how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showers such a person with his mercy and with his blessings and with his forgiveness allahu akbar may allah make us among those who are forgiven and are blessed and are shown mercy from allah azza wa jal and sayyidna sufyan athawri rahimahullah ta'ala he was blessed with such mercy and divine blessings of allah azza wa jal that we can only dream of let us inshallah join the madni qafila let us come into the mahol and the atmosphere of dawat islami where the fragrant sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam its fragrance and its beauty is present in this mahol and inshallah through the barakah of this mahol we would automatically and naturally we we will be inshallah guided to perform our fard ibadat especially if we go 
into maybe three days of Madani Qafila and also by joining the halaqa of our Madani brothers, inshallah, with this in mind that I must strive to reform myself and the people of the entire world, inshallah, Azza wa Jal, Sallu al Habib, Sallallahu ala Muhammad, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Teachings of Islam, Teachings of Islam, The Magnificent Teachings of Islam, Teachings of Islam.